Hello students. Today uh, we are going to start a new topic that is low temperature techniques. So in this module so far we have studied the vacuum measurement techniques and in the second part now uh, we are going to uh, learn about low temperature techniques. So low temperature techniques are very essential in various scientific and technological applications. For example, in uh, some of the research fields of uh, physics, uh, we need to perform some experiments at a very low temperature where we want to study some physical properties of matter. And in that particular case, we have to use some techniques by which we can reduce the temperature and we can perform the desired experiment. So therefore, uh, the low temperature techniques are needed to be studied here. So there, uh, these are included, some of these uh, techniques, they are included uh, as a part of your curriculum of this course. So, uh, not only in scientific application, but in technology also, there are a number of applications of these low temperature techniques. So, first of all, uh, let us try to understand the basics about these low temperature techniques. So, usually we are familiar with a word that is called as refrigeration. So, whenever we talk about low temperature and how to bring the temperature down. So the word that is very commonly used is refrigeration. So it is the process of cooling of bodies or fluids to temperature lower than those available in the surrounding. So whatever the temperature of surrounding, if you bring the temperature lower than that, temperature of the material bodies or in a region or of a space, if you bring the temperature lower than that of the surrounding, then we call that process as refrigeration. We call that process as refrigeration. Now, what is actually refrigeration? So, usually refrigerators, they are known as entropy squeezers. So, what is entropy actually? So, in thermodynamics, you have studied this term entropy. So, entropy represents a degree of uh, disorder in a particular system. Now, while creating a low temperature, what we are actually do doing? We are minimizing the entropy. So that means we are bringing down this entropy value of a system. So, entropy or the degree of disorder lower than those available in the surrounding. So that is how you, you can produce the low temperature by bringing down the entropy of a system. So how to bring the entropy down or how to have a very small value of entropy? There can be different techniques and that is what we are going to study here. Now, any practical refrigeration process, it actually involves reducing the temperature of a system from its initial value to the required temperature. So, that actually depends on the application for which you have designed that low temperature technique or method and then maintaining the system at required low temperature. So, no, no, it is not the task to bring only the temperature to a required uh, value, but after that, your, your system should be able to maintain the required low temperature. So, there are two steps. Any low temperature technique, there are two steps. First of all, to bring down the temperature of a system to a desired level and thereafter, to maintain the temperature at the required level. So these are the two important tasks involved in any low temperature 
technique system. Okay, so uh, let us first of all see what are these different techniques available or methods of producing low temperatures. Some of these methods are very simple and commonly used everywhere and some of these methods are highly precise methods and it needs a high techniques. So first technique which is very simple one, cooling by cold medium. So later on we are going to study all these techniques and at least one example with few, with few examples uh, I shall discuss all these particular uh, methods for producing low temperature techniques. Okay, so cooling by cold medium this is the first method then second one endothermic mixing of substances third method is phase change processes fourth is expansion of solids fifth is expansion of gases sixth is thermoelectric refrigeration and seventh is adiabatic demagnetization adiabatic demagnetization. So usually these are the uh, you can classify all these methods in these seven different techniques. So uh, let us uh, try to understand each of these process in detail. So let us start with the first uh, method or first technique that is cooling by cold medium. Cooling by cold medium. Okay so cooling by bringing cold medium in thermal contact with the system to be refrigerated. So whatever the system for which you want to bring down its temperature or you want to create a low temperature, then you should bring a cooling medium in thermal contact with your system. Okay. So cooling medium may be anything. It may be a liquid or gas. Usually liquid or gases, they are used as a cooling medium. Some of the solids, they are, they are also used as a uh, cold medium. So what is necessary here is that there, there should be a thermal contact between the actual cooling medium and your system. System means the, the, the material or whatever things you want to uh, bring down at certain low temperatures. So there should be a thermal contact that is very important case and the energy absorbed by the substance providing cooling increases its temperature. So this is very obvious. So whenever you bring the cool cold medium in thermal contact with your system, what will happen? There will be a thermal energy transport. There will be a thermal energy transport from your system that means hot body to your cold medium that is the cold body. So this is a natural process. The heat always uh, transfers from hot body to cold body. This is a natural phenomenon. So your system which is at a higher temperature level will be in thermal contact with the cold medium. So heat will transfer from system to the cold medium and therefore the system temperature will fall whereas the temperature of cold medium will rise. So if you want to continue the process, what is required is that the cold medium should be properly circulated so that there should be a fresh, fresh supply of the cold medium and the process of bringing down the temperature continues till you achieve the required temperature. Not only that, thereafter, if you want to maintain the temperature, then then also the temperature of the cold medium, if it rises, a fresh supply of the cold medium should be provided to the system. So this is a very simple uh, way of uh, providing uh, cooling by cold medium. So the uh, heat transfer during this process, that is cooling by cold medium, it can be given by this formula. So what is this formula? Q is equal to m c p delta t so what are these quantity m is the mass of what is q actually initially q is the heat energy transferred from the system to the cold medium okay so this q 
it is given by m c p delta t so what is m m is the mass of the substance providing cooling and what is cp cp is the specific heat of the substance providing cooling specific heat is very important here this this particular quantity then delta t is the temperature rise undergone by the substance providing cooling okay so whatever the amount of temperature that has been increased of this cold medium that is nothing but delta t so the heat transfer from the system to the cold medium that is given by this this particular simple formula so uh, what should be the properties of this this uh, coolant so the medium that is used cold medium that is used uh, we can call it as a coolant so a coolant may be a liquid or gas that is used to reduce or regulate the temperature of a system and ideal coolant should possess this this particular properties so what are these properties it should have high thermal capacity okay so its ability to accept the thermal energy from its surrounding so that is represented by this uh, this factor thermal capacity so obviously a ideal coolant should have high thermal capacity then it should have low viscosity low viscosity so low viscosity you know that viscosity represent the uh, the you can say the relative uh, motion among the layers uh, inside inside the fluid and if that is higher definitely the the there will be a resistance of circulation and in cooling process circulation is very important therefore there should be a low viscosity therefore the uh, circulation of the cold medium will be easy one then the cost of the coolant should be low so this is a very uh, practical approach whenever you want to design a uh, cooling system then uh, or low temperature technique this first one then the cost involved should also be less so low cost then it should be non toxic uh, non toxic in the sense uh, human uh, interference may be there by using this system and it should not uh, cause any toxicity to the human being then it should be chemically inert sometimes uh, when you are circulating the coolant uh, if uh, it is corrosive in nature then that will obviously uh, corrode the parts involved in the system so that should be avoided some of the uh, very commonly used uh, uh, coolants uh, i have just listed some of the names for example cold water then molten metal and salt some of the molten metals and salts they are also used for example sodium potassium alloy so that that is a good uh, example of this type then liquid nitrogen so very cheap and easily available uh, technique for bringing down the temperature liquid nitrogen and liquid helium these are very commonly used so this is the first method cooling by cold medium okay now let us go to the next uh, method that is endothermic mixing of substances so uh, in chemistry you might have studied endothermic reactions so uh, the reaction where the uh, heat of the reaction is taken from the surrounding so some of the example for example uh, if you dissolve a salt in water what happens while dissolving the salt in water this reaction needs certain energy and that energy is taken from the surrounding in the form of heat so what will happen the temperature of the surrounding will decrease so if it is water here definitely the temperature of the water will decrease and therefore it can be used as a medium for the uh, low temperature technique some of the salts such as sodium nitrate sodium chloride calcium chloride so when they are added into water pure water uh, its temperature falls so by dissolving uh, sodium chloride uh, we can bring a temperature about minus 21 degree centigrade so 
this is very good uh, simple technique then uh, another salt for example calcium chloride if you use calcium chloride it can give you a temperature about minus 51 degree centigrade so these are uh, some simple uh, salts they can be used uh, for bringing down temperature and this is a, a kind of method known as endothermic mixing of substances but uh, this this method has certainly some practical limitations so what are the practical limitations first one the refrigeration effect uh, obtained is very small and uh, it means that the heat of solution of the dissolved substance is small for most of the commonly used salt the heat of solution of the dissolved substance so whatever the amount of heat required for this this dissolution of the salts that is less and therefore the refrigeration produce is small enough the refrigeration produce is uh, very small and second thing uh, you know that in order to keep the cost of the technique uh, smaller what we expect that once you use the uh, this particular salt for cooling purpose later on uh, after completing the process you should be able to recover the salt and further you can use it again second time whenever you require to produce a low temperature so that particular technique uh, is not economical that means the recovery of dissolved salt is not economical and therefore this, these are some of the practical limitations of uh, this uh, second method now let us go to the third method that is phase change process phase change you know that any material body uh, it can undergo a phase change so refrigeration is produced when substance undergo endothermic phase change so whatever the phase change takes place for that phase change uh, heat energy is utilized and that is taken from the surrounding and therefore the surrounding temperature can be brought down okay so phase changes such as endothermic phase changes such as sublimation melting and evaporation so sublimation you know that when when a substance is uh, heated then it uh, before melting it, it will directly go to the uh, vapor state so directly it will uh, go into a vapor state that is what uh, sublimation and uh, melting as you know solid to liquid and evaporation third one these are the uh, what we known as the three processes uh, where the, the, the heat is taken heat is required and that will be taken from the surrounding okay so these phase change processes will be uh, used to bring down the temperature uh, some of the examples uh, for uh, the first one is pure water ice so ice which is prepared from very pure water and if it is at a one atmospheric pressure and if it melts so it melts about a temperature of 0 degree centigrade and the amount of heat it extract from the surrounding is of the order of 335 kilojoule per kg okay so this much amount of heat will be required to to uh, melt uh, one the uh, pure ice pure water ice at one atmospheric pressure so it can take away 335 kilojoule per kg of heat from the surrounding so this is this is very important uh, ice so melting process so ice melts at one atmospheric pressure and the temperature at which it start melting is 0 degree centigrade and it can carry away it can take away 335 kilojoule of heat energy per kg of the material used that means the ice then another example so this first example is of melting then uh, another example uh, that is of uh, sublimation so this example is of uh, dry ice or what we uh, know as the solid carbon dioxide which is known as a dry ice so this solid carbon dioxide uh, kept at one atmospheric pressure it can undergo a sublimation at a temperature of about minus 78.5 degree centigrade 
and uh, therefore uh, it can it can uh, take away a very uh, large amount of uh, heat energy so it it is yielding a refrigeration effect of, of the order of 573 kilojoule per kg so this is an example of uh, sublimation now uh, evaporation or vaporization is the most commonly used this third method this this is most commonly used phase change process in practical refrigeration system because it is easier to handle fluids in uh, cyclic uh, devices this is one of the important practical approach to handle uh, fluids in cyclic devices that that is more easier here therefore uh, in koppmann refrigeration uh, techniques this uh, evaporation or vaporization that particular technique third method it is most commonly used here okay so uh, in these systems the working fluid mostly it is called as a refrigerant the domestic refrigerant there also we are using this same technique or refrigerants are used okay so in this system the working fluid fluid or refrigerant it provides refrigeration effect as it changes its state from liquid to vapor in a evaporator in a evaporator so a state change phase change occurs from liquid to vapor in the evaporator and in this particular phase change process lot of heat will be absorbed from the surrounding that means the load that we keep in a refrigerator and that is how it can bring the temperature of the system down so uh, now let us discuss in terms of certain terms so in the phase change process the amount of refrigeration produced it is given by the formula q is equal to m in bracket delta h ph okay ph stands for for phase change okay now q as usual it is the amount of heat transferred then uh, in the refrigeration or you can say refrigeration produced and m is the mass of the phase change substance so whatever the material that undergoes a phase change the mass of that particular substance okay then delta hph it is the latent heat of phase change ph is for phase change okay so delta h represents the latent heat of phase change so the amount of heat required to undergo for a substance from one phase to another phase so that is the latent heat of phase change so this is also a very important part the amount of heat uh, that will be transferred in this process that will be given by this simple formula now the temperature at which the phase change occurs is also very important Uh, in in this kind of uh, applications so whatever the temperature that depends mostly what type of refrigerant you are used and how much amount you are using so all these parameters are involved here okay the uh, important term now I, i just want to uh, define here that is known as a normal boiling point so what is this normal boiling point so it is the temperature at which the liquid and vapor are in equilibrium at a pressure of 1 atmospheric pressure so for any uh, refrigerant whatever the refrigerant that we use in phase change process okay so for it the this parameter is very important normal boiling point what is its normal boiling point so it is the temperature at which the liquid and vapor are in equilibrium at a pressure of 1 atmospheric pressure so for different refrigerant this normal boiling point is different and what is expected here the refrigerant a good refrigerant that is required in in this uh, technique should have low normal boiling point so whatever the fluids that are used in refrigeration system uh, they should preferably have a low normal boiling point such that they vaporizes at sufficiently low temperature to produce refrigeration so at lower temperature 
if they are vaporized, then definitely they are going to produce sufficiently low temperature and uh, sufficient refrigeration will be uh, provided by this this particular uh, refrigerant if they have low normal boiling points.